I'm totally happy with my Mavic Air, despite the shortcomings of a shorter flight time and limited range. But I was very disappointed to find out that they left out waypoints as part of the package. In this video, I want to show you how you can easily plan and execute a waypoint mission with your Mavic Air. But before we get to that, let's roll that intro. DJI has traditionally included waypoints as part of the package, at least from the Mavic Pro class and upwards. And the way it works is that you have to actually fly the mission and then record each waypoint. By the end of the mission, then you save uh, the number of waypoints that you have recorded, so you can play them back later. There are some limitations to DJI's approach, and sometimes it would be better to just be able to map the mission prior to arriving at the destination. To be perfectly honest, I don't like DJI's approach about waypoints, where I have to spend precious time and battery life to record a mission. And this is where I got all excited when I learned that third-party software supplier Litchi has added support for the Mavic Air, including waypoints. For those of you new to Litchi, this is basically a piece of software not written by DJI, where you're able to operate the DJI drones. You will have more or less the same amount of functionality that you know from the DJI Go app. One part where it differentiates is the way it's handling waypoints. Let's jump directly into the Litchi app and I will show you how to plan and execute a mission. Let's hook up the Mavic. So this is uh, the main interface of uh, the Litchi app. Uh, you don't need to uh, connect the Mavic uh, to plan a mission, but uh, I have uh, decided to do so for this uh, demonstration. Let me give you a quick tour. In the upper left corner, you have the flight modes, and there are some of them you might uh, be familiar with. At least they work in the same way as we know from uh, the DJI software. But for this video, it's Waypoint uh, that uh, is interesting to us. So let's select that one. The top bar has all the usual stuff uh, that we know, like number of satellites, signal strength, uh, battery level, etc, etc. To the right side, there's a gear icon, and if I press that, I access all the customizable settings for the app. There's a lot of stuff to play around with in here, but uh, I do want to point out that the go home altitude of 30 meters is the default value of the waypoint when we later set them on the map. So if you want that different, you need to change that height. Below the top bar, there are some uh, specific buttons that are tied to the waypoint mission. The same goes for the button that you find on uh, the left side in the middle of the screen. So these are completely linked to uh, planning a mission. So if I just for the sake of this uh, demonstration switch to another mode, you can see that the buttons are changing. So let's jump back to waypoints. In uh, the lower right corner, you can see the live feed, and uh, that is put uh, on top of uh, the map main view where we can see where we actually are. And I can switch these two by just tapping uh, the live feed. So I can get the map in the corner and the live uh, feed as the main view and the other way around. So that's pretty easy. I can even take it away. So if I want a clear view of the map when I plan the mission, I can take the live uh, feed away. So that's uh, pretty easy uh, to manage. Finally, there's the camera menu. There should be no surprises here as well. You can switch between video and photo. And uh, there's a camera settings menu here that contains more or less uh, the settings that uh, you're used to from the DJI software. Litchi made a great job making this uh, interface very easy to oversee with not too many surprises. There's plenty of stuff uh, that you can mess around with in the Litchi app, but it's outside the scope of this video. So let's go plan a mission. Hey. If you're new around here and want to improve your video skills, learn about e-wheels, consider subscribing to more weekly tips, tests and tutorials. In this example, I want to plan a very simple four waypoint mission with a single point of interest, maybe an additional one. So before we get started by plotting in the waypoints, we need to make sure that the mission settings are like we want them to be. You access it by hitting the gear wheel. And the first thing is a heading of the aircraft. We leave that to custom because that's taken care of by the waypoints. The finishing action, uh, I prefer that uh, return to home. So once it has completed the mission, it will return to home. Not to make uh, the footage too uh, jerky uh, when it passes a waypoint, we uh, use uh, the curved turns 
that will make it nice and smoothly when it goes through a waypoint. The cruising speed is set to 9 km an hour, which is a little bit high in my opinion, so let's put it down to 6. I would assume that is around 4, 4.5 four uh, mile per hour. The max flight speed is 20, that's fine. And uh, the default curve size of 75% is also fine. I want to handle uh, the way that the gimbal uh, is acting on each waypoint, so I just disable this as the default. I can just press the button next to cancel and then uh, the mission settings are all uh, ready, set and go. And we can start plotting in some waypoints. I set the first waypoint by just tapping the screen like that. And then I put the second one by tapping again. The third one by tapping again and uh, the final and fourth one here. The next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to position a point of interest. So I need to make this uh, little marker up here blue and I will position point of interest just in front of the car. Don't mistake the car that's already on the map. It's not here. It's from an old Google Maps. The car is actually positioned uh, right next to the aircraft. Now I will make another point of interest uh, just for the sake of it to show you how you can switch the view angle. Each point in the mission can be moved. If you're not happy with the position, you can just move them. And as you can see, the, the, the Turkish line the curve that we selected uh, prior to this. And you might not uh, even want to have a curve, but you can take that away on the individual uh, waypoints. So right now we have uh, four waypoints, two points of interest, and uh, you can customize the height of each point of interest by tapping on it. And I can say, okay, I want this to be in four meters height. Go to the other one, 20. So that's le le a little bit less than the default height. Before we can start the mission, we want to make sure that each waypoint is uh, set up uh, like we want it to be. So I just tap the waypoint and I get into the waypoint one settings and I can switch between the different waypoints on the arrows here in the bottom. So that's uh, pretty sweet. What I can do in each waypoint is that I can uh, change the default altitude of 30 meters. I can uh, change the speed that it travels. Uh, it uses the cruising speed that we set up just before in the general mission settings, but I can deviate from that if I wanted to travel faster between two of uh, the waypoints. I can modify the curve size, uh, but I can't do that on uh, waypoint one because uh, there's no curve uh, there. So, so we've got to do that on waypoint two. I can customize the heading of uh, the aircraft. I will just leave that because that's predictated uh, by the position of the waypoint. And then a pretty smart thing is I can select the point of interest that I wanted to look at. And uh, as you recall, I put in two point of interest. Uh, so I can actually, if I press this one, select between one and two. And that will uh, make the aircraft look in the direction of each point of interest. For this example, I want to start looking at number one. I also wanted to focus direction of uh, the point of interest. And this seems uh, a little bit redundant, but it, it's actually not because the first selection uh, indicates which way the camera is pointing. So the camera is pointing towards uh, the point of interest one. If you select focus point of interest, it will actually tilt so it keeps the point of interest in focus. There's a big difference if the point of interest is in one meter or in 100 meters. So that will help you do that. And you can add or subtract from the gimbal angle on these uh, plus minus uh, below. The final option is also pretty smart. It, uh, it is actions that uh, you can apply to your mission. And uh, this is basically a way of making the drone do stuff when it reaches a certain waypoint. So if I press the plus, I can actually make it stay in a certain position for a period of time, take a photo, start recording, stop recording, rotate the aircraft, and I can even tilt the camera. So for this uh, case, I want to start recording when I reach this waypoint. So if I go to waypoint number two, I will just leave um, everything more or less and uh, I don't want to do anything more than that Then focus on the point of interest. Waypoint number three. In this case, we also wanted to focus on the point of interest, but we could say that have it stop recording when it reaches waypoint three. Waypoint four, we can uh, make it uh, take a photo and uh, I found out it's a good idea to let it stay for let's say two seconds before it takes the photo. So now we are basically ready to launch the mission. But before we launch it, it's a good idea to save it. So this is a demo, so just do like that. 
So now the mission is saved. So uh, when I want to execute it again, I have it uh, nicely in this uh, list. So that's uh, pretty sweet. So this is the mission. So let's repeat the mission. We go to waypoint one, focus on the point of interest, and we start recording. We move on to waypoint number two, where we don't do much other than focus, and then continue to waypoint number three, where we stop recording, and then finish off by flying to waypoint four, where we stay for two seconds before we take a photo, and we could, for the fun of it, change this so the photo is taken towards point of interest number two. From executing a few missions, I learned the following if you want the drone to follow your plan. You need to go under settings and disable the auto recording, otherwise the drone will start recording uh, once it takes off. With mixed missions, you can't use curves, so you need to disable that under mission settings. When you use curves, it ignores uh, the orders that it's giving in uh, the waypoints. And finally, I forgot to focus uh, waypoint 4 towards point of interest too. I'm by no means an expert in Litchi. I just got the software starting to play around with it. So I just wanted to put this video together just to give you a brief introduction to automated flight. You might have some uh, additional tips and tricks how to get the best out of Litchi. So put them in the comment section below or head over to the Drone Wheeler Facebook group and share it with me and some of the other subscribers. Now we're ready to execute the mission. So let's pull up uh, the live feed so we can see what the drone is actually seeing. You execute uh, the mission by pressing uh, the play icon uh, down here in the left menu in the middle of the screen. Recording started. Recording start. Mission ended. As you can see from the footage, there's a lot of potential in the Lichy app for automated missions. But it will take a while for you to learn how to tweak the footage so it looks really good. Once you pass that point, it's a breeze to make automated recordings. Lichy is not free, it's around $30 in the App Store as far as I recall. But if you need that kind of functionality, I don't think it's a very high price to pay. Various reports from the internet and the Litchi forum indicates that this is a not a bug-free uh, software experience. You can run into trouble where the drone deviates uh, dramatically from the route. If that starts to happen and uh, you run into a flyaway, a good pro tip is actually to flick it into sport mode and out again to make it exit the waypoint mission and gain control. Nevertheless, keep an eye on the drone all the time to make sure that you don't run into trouble. By the way, did you see the video I made about ND fillers? There seems to be a lot of misconceptions about them. This video clarifies where, when and how you use ND fillers. If you missed that, you can access it by clicking here. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. <laughs>